Hello, everybody. What camera should hey. I look at? <laughs> okay, so we are live now. And um, wait, we're, we're on live on here, too. I wasn't, wasn't meaning to do that. Okay, so we're all at the table. This is a whole new thing to us, you guys. But we are on live. And do not put your comments yet, but we are going to open it up for a time for comments in a little bit. It's Easter. Um, Jesus is alive and resurrected, Amen. so there's no need to mourn. We are rejoicing today. And um, Carl had his first church service today as Pastor Carl <laughs> over there at the hotel. And it's so exciting. we're excited about that as well. We wanted to spend this time with you. It is also our um, Vida anniversary. We are Yay. one year old. It yeah. was, yeah, Vida anniversary. It, it right. was it's a year ago that we begun. Uh, can you believe it? No, I can't. It went by so fast. So quick. And um, yeah, so so now it's one year. So we wanted to come on and share with you. We're also going to take communion. And so we'll see who gets on. And if you've got something around you, run to your kitchen and get you a piece of bread and a little drink of water. And we are going to take communion together. And the great thing is, is this going to be the first time you get to take communion with your loved one on the inside because once they get this loaded up, they'll also be taking communion with us. So that's awesome. really cool. Um, last year, we did communion by podcast and they took it on the inside and some of them waited to get on the phone with their loved ones mm -hmm. and then take communion with mom or with their wife or with their children. How cool is that? Yes. But awesome. I think that this is even better because we get to do it with you guys and with them kind of all together at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And that is just amazing. Technology is amazing. And it's just given us so much to do. Am I supposed to push this back? Okay. So Jeremy's going to share a little bit about Easter. And then we're going to do that. Yeah. So uh, oh. we're sharing a mic. And Chris nearly knocked over your drink. But we're good. These are the dangers of being live, guys. So uh, we're, we're so excited. And uh, like you said, happy Resurrection Day. Uh, and I was just thinking. Uh, right here. Oh, in the middle yeah, of yeah. us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I was just thinking about, like, if you get a gift from someone, if somebody gives you a gift or they give you a card, and sometimes, like, even someone that you weren't really expecting to be noticing. Uh, and, and Eve talks a lot about Sam. Sam is a gift giver. She's very thoughtful and strategic with her gifts. Yes. Like, her gifts are like, uh, she's got ninja warfare with yeah, yeah, right. really, really sure. good at them. Super yeah. power, uh, right. And so when you get a gift like that from someone that you weren't expecting especially, you think to yourself, wow, it's so nice they were thinking of me, you know? I mean, that gift or that card <laughs> is a sign that they thought of you and that you were important to them, right? And so I just want to talk to you a little bit on Resurrection Sunday uh, about Jesus and the first thing on his mind when he was after he was crucified, tortured and crucified and killed and then resurrected. The first thing on his mind was the ones that he loved, the ones that needed him. It was you and it was me and it was his followers. And so um, I want to just reference you real quick. Everything that Jesus did, every time he told a story. It wasn't just a story. He was telling these parables for a reason. He was many times tell a story, and then later with his life, he would demonstrate exactly what that story was about. So in Luke chapter 15, he told this story uh, about a shepherd who had 100 sheep, and 99 of them were right where they were supposed to be, but there was just one that got lost. And what he said is, when a shepherd loses that one sheep, he's going to leave the 99 with someone trustworthy, and he's going to go, and he's going to do whatever it takes to find that one missing sheep. And so, uh, of course, that's the same chapter where he talks about the story of the prodigal son, uh, where the father ran to his son who had uh, given everything away, you know, um, sold every all his father's possessions and spent all the money wrong. And so, you know, Jesus is looking for the lost sheep. And so here's the proof. In Luke chapter 24, on Resurrection Sunday, uh, this is after he'd suffered the worst kind of death. And uh, actually, the word excruciating that we have in English, uh, the, the Romans invented that word to describe the kind of pain that was caused by crucifixion. It was such a specific, unique pain that they invented that word in Latin. And that's where we get our word excruciating from. The pain of crucifixion on a cross, because many things about the way that it happened was just one of the worst kind of pains. And they like they studied it. Mm. The Romans studied how is the most painful way to kill one of our enemies. 
And that's what they did to Jesus. Uh, before he went to the cross, they had a, a whip that had 39 leather thongs that had steel and uh, bone and, and uh, you know, glass and all these different things tied in the end. And so when they do the 39 lashes, it flays open the back of someone so bad that it cuts down to the bone. So when I say Jesus had a hard weekend, that is a major understatement. There's no way to describe the torture and then being rejected by his own followers, his closest one, Peter, denying him three times, him feeling the presence of God removed from him. Um, it was just a horrible time. And then he was, he was dead. And he went to, into death and to hell, it says, and stole the keys, right? And he came back and he was resurrected on Resurrection Sunday. And the first thing on his mind when he came back to life, when he was resurrected, was his people. In Luke 24, uh, chapter 1, it says that the first people that saw them, him were actually women, which is really interesting. It's always fascinated me that Jesus did that, that he showed himself first to women. Because in the Hebrew culture, a woman was an incompetent witness. Like if, a, if you had 10 women that came into trial and they testified against one man, whatever the one man said was going to go. Women were not valued in that culture at that time. And yet Jesus chose to go and show himself wow. to three women, specifically the first one that saw him was Mary Magdalene. We know from Mark chap chapter 16, verse 9, the very first per person who saw Jesus in his resurrected body was Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. So back in that time, I mean, uh, you, you know, they called her demon possessed. Nowadays, they just say she's got bipolar or schizophrenia right. or she's mentally ill or she's a nut or whatever. They would have put her in an insane asylum or involuntary commitment. And here she had been completely set free by Jesus. And the first thing on his mind was to go see the woman who had been delivered from this demonic oppression wow. and let her know, hey, don't despair. Don't give up. I'm alive. I'm here. Wow. Yeah, which I just think is so beautiful. And I just reminded of uh, what Jesus always said. He said, the first shall be last and the last mm -hmm. first. And those of you who watch the podcast, you know that Jesus grew up in the worst neighborhood in all of Israel with the Galileans mm -hmm. to the despised and the rejects and the outcasts. And he chose them for his disciples. And he chose a demon-possessed woman to be one of his closest followers. And she's the first one he went to go see. So the first thing on his mind was those who have been oppressed and those who needed deliverance, and those who needed to be set free. That was the first thing on his mind when he came back from the dead. So also in Luke chapter 24, in that same chapter, on that same day, uh, Jesus went and found two guys on a road to Emmaus, and they were some of Jesus' disciples, and he had told his disciples before he was crucified, stay here in Jerusalem and wait. He said, wait, something's coming, you've got to stay here. But these disciples didn't wait. Because why? They were disappointed. They were sad. They, 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 they had expected Jesus to be the Messiah. They never thought he'd be arrested and crucified and then die. And so they lost faith. They lost hope. And they started going down the wrong road. And even though they're going down the wrong road and they weren't where Jesus had told them to be, and they gave up hope and they had lost their faith, Jesus ran after them to catch up with them. Mm -hmm. He went down the wrong road to find somebody headed the wrong way. And I just think it's so beautiful that one of the first things Jesus did in his resurrected body was to go find the ones that were lost. It's like the 99 sheep and those two sheep that were wandering down the road to Emmaus because they just lost hope and gave up and wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, I'm still here. Wow. It's not over. There's hope. There's joy. There's yeah. peace. So he re revealed himself. And, you know, as, as I was studying this this morning... That is what is happening right now, is so many men and women who've been incarcerated and their family members that are watching, you gave up hope, you thought that it was over, you thought that there was uh, no way for you to experience God's presence in your life, and yet, he came and he found you on the wrong road. Yeah. He went looking for you to find you, to let you know, hey, there's good news. So the last person that Jesus revealed himself to, the last group of people, was the disciples specifically Peter. So in Luke chapter 24, verse 35, Jesus, after he ran down the road to find the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he ran back to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and he all of a sudden appeared in the upper room where they were all hiding because they were scared. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They weren't bold. They weren't courageous. They weren't full of faith. They were full of doubt. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he appeared in the midst of them, and he revealed himself to them. 
And uh, so, so cool to me because the last time we saw Peter, just a few chapters before this, in Luke chapter 22, verse 61, he denied Jesus three times that he even knew him. And it says in, in verse 61, Jesus actually turned and made eye contact with him on the third time that he denied him. He's like, I see you, you know. And so here Jesus appears, and, and they'd already heard from the women that he had been resurrected, but they hadn't seen him yet with their own eyes. And he appears in the middle of them. And it's just so crazy because I know that Peter, who was the leader, he was the one who was the boldest, uh, right? I'm sure he had to be thinking, oh, man. I just rejected him three times. I let him down so much. Uh, he, he had to be expecting to be rejected or to be reproved or be uh, uh, pushed away maybe. And maybe, maybe John gets promoted or James gets promoted or whatever. And I'm sure that J Peter was going through all those things. And I just wanted to ask you, have you ever had a situation like that where you know that you did wrong and to someone that you cared so much about like, and you wanted so badly to fix it and when you knew that you were going to see him again for the first time after you had let them down and made that mistake, you were probably stressing out. You were probably wondering, are they going to let me make it? Can I ever be forgiven? Am I going to be able to get back up off the mat? And, and can we move forward past this? And I just think it's so cool because I know Peter was wondering. He had to be. It's human nature. Wondering all those things. But the first priority for Jesus was to let him know I'm going to let you make it. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. You may have fallen down, but just when you get up, when you're restored, Jesus said to him before you even denied him, strengthen your brothers. And so he chases us down, even when we're going down the wrong roads. He finds us, even when we've made these terrible mistakes. There's nobody who's gone too far or done too much to reject or lose the love of God. And it's just so powerful to me that on Resurrection Sunday, what was on Jesus' mind? You were on Jesus' mind. I was on Jesus' mind. As soon as he got up from the grave, he came back and he was looking for his people. And that's what he's doing right now. Amen. So his resurrection made our resurrection possible. Come on. Yes. Without him resurrecting from the dead, we couldn't come alive from our sin. We couldn't come alive from sin and death and the, the, the wages of sin. And we couldn't overcome it's because he overcame. So it's a day to rejoice. Yes. Yes, um, Sam is going to share a song with us. Now hold, if you are giving a shout out, thank you guys. I can see your comments right here. Like happy Easter to you guys. Thank you so much. Um, but, but wait for your comments on your loved ones. When we turn on the comments is when they're going to be able to see them. Okay. So we're going to share a song and then Carl's going to share a little bit. Because if we share the comments with the guys at the same time we're talking, then we're not going to be able <laughs> right. to, um, you, they aren't going to be able to listen because they're going to be watching the comments so hard, right. okay? Yeah. So, so Sam's going to share a song with us, and then um, we'll have a little bit more, and we'll open it up for the comments, okay? All right. So I'm going to sing. Happy Resurrection Sunday, Real Vida Family, says Kizzy Hogan. Hey, Hello, Kizzy. Hey, Kizzy. Kizzy. <laughs> I've been trying to get Kizzy on here for a long time. I can only get her by comment. I'm yeah. done. Um, but she'll have to come on. Anyway, this is new. I know normally people don't have so many people on for a live, but this is the whole Real Vida Family. Chris can't get on um, because he's over there running the computers and stuff. But if he says anything, you can hear him yeah. because the whole, the whole room is mic'd. And we're going to sing a song with you all at some point. And I don't know how that's going to work. I know that the sound on our last live wasn't very good. Right. With our, But it doesn't matter. Right. It's like we're around the camp meeting, you know, having a fire, campfire, and roasting marshmallows. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, you see we got our little glow sticks here yes. on our, Party. we're like children. We're all excited because it's our anniversary, and um, and it's Easter, so it could yeah. have been a better day. And Carl had his first church service. Yes, right. it's a big day. And, and we got these little glow things, yeah. right? But they don't whistle. <laughs> they don't make the noise. I wanted to whistle, and we didn't get to whistle. But anyways, oh, so a couple of you guys that know how to whistle, yeah. you'll have to do some whistling. That was lame. Yeah. <laughs> so we need, like, you know, put the fingers in the mouth. I've always it. wanted to do that, but I can't. Me <laughs> Maybe when the guys can. Uh, Chris? Do you know how to whistle like that, Chris? Yeah. The uh, finger whistle. No, I'm like, okay. No, okay. Okay. okay, well, Sam's going to share a song, and we'll see how it turns out, y'all. Yes. Awesome. 
songs. What you got if you ain't got love? The kind that you just wanna give away. It's okay to open up. Go ahead and let your light shine through. I know it's hard on a rainy day. You wanna shut the world out and just be left alone. But don't run out on your faith. Cause sometimes that mountain you've been climbing is just a grain of sand. And why you've been out there searching for forever is in your hands. Oh, and when you figure out love is all that matters after all, it sure makes everything. so small It's so easy to get lost inside A problem that seems so big at the time It's like a river that's so wide It swallows you When you're sitting around thinking about what you can't change and worrying about all the wrong things Time's flying by Moving so fast you better make it count cause you can't get it back sometimes that mountain you've been climbing is just a grain of sand and why you've been out there searching for forever is in your hands whoa Just a grain of sand. And why you've been out there searching for forever is in your hands. Ooh, and when you figure out love is all that matters after all, it sure makes everything. We can see your comments right now, but they can't see them yet on the shout out. So he's been scrolling at the bottom saying, wait for your shout outs, you guys. So wait, hold on, wait. I know you're excited right now. We can see what you're saying. Thank you so much for the happy Easter's and um, happy Resurrection Day. And don't forget, it's the Vidaversary. We're one yeah. year old on podcast now on the inside. So awesome. uh, we didn't use mics our last live, and so the music and the, the voices were not as good. Hopefully it, you can hear it a little better with the two mics on is what we got on right now today. But anyway, Carl had his first, first church service today at that hotel. Tell us what you want to tell us about it, Carl. Well, you know, it, it was a, an awesome thing. Um, you know, it just happened to fall on Easter. It wasn't really planned like that. Right. Cool, and, you know, we found that place. Yeah. You know, I went to so many places. I've been trying to, you know, rent a room with a church or, you know, borrow somebody's church or something like that. Right. And no doors opened. And then just this place just kind of opened up. And um, it just happened to be the first service fall, fall on Easter. Yeah, that's awesome. Which is, you know, yeah. and the Vita, you know, Nation Vita Birthday. Right. <laughs> so that's, it was all cool, right? And, you know, I, I know that God's been you know, talking to me and my wife, you know, about doing something like this for some time. And, you know, it just kind of fell into place. And, 
you know, we're all called to be gatekeepers, right? Yeah. You right. know, and the first thing, you know, that we're a gatekeeper o- over is our own self, our own spirit, you know, and and then you're a gatekeeper on your over your family, yeah. right? And then, you know, you're a gatekeeper over your community as well. You know, and this you we're having church at the Four Corners in Tyler, right? So it's uh you know, it's it's right there on sixty nine and um the, the loop, loop yeah. right? So if any of you is familiar with that area, you know, it's it's just it's a needed thing Come that on. that people get some God. So over I mean there. if they're not familiar with yeah. that area, you're not from Tyler. It's the area where there's prostitution, there's addicts, there's dealers. That's where we need to go, where they're sick, not right. those who are well. A place that has never been conquered, um, right. that, that needs the love of God, that needs the power of God. And so I want you to tell about a couple of things. You said that you met a lady, you know, you've been going there. Carl right. has been going, pre-going, talking to people, handing out cards, things like that. And you ran into a lady that you told you were going to have church service. And what happened? Well, I, I told her that, you know, we were getting ready to have a service. I gave her a flyer. And, you know, tears just started running down her face. She's like, you're doing what over here? Yeah. Like, I've, I've never heard of anything like that yeah. over right. here. Right. You know, and, and the sad thing about it, right, there, I mean, there's a church uh, 100 yards away, right? But, yeah. you know, for whatever reason, you know, that the, the people yeah. in that area are not being impacted. You know, and we just want to make a difference. Yeah. Come on. You know, yeah, and we're just, of God. yes, and we're so honored and just honored, you know, to that, that God would have us, you know, doing something like this, you know, and, and to be able to, to, to outreach to people and, you know, going around and praying with people, you know, for the last couple of days and, you know, just telling them that we're there, right? And, you know, God loves small beginnings, right? You Amen. know, and, and God Amen. rejoices to see the work begin. Amen. Right? Amen. So for those of you that don't know us, okay, so this is our crew here. We're a very small crew that have been doing podcasts for a year behind the whole United States jails and prisons. Um, every state in the United States, including Alaska, um, we are reaching Alaska over there. And um, I'm I'm the host of the podcast that we do on there. I'm the one that kind of spends all my time reading the letters, and um, the rest of them got full time jobs. Uh, my husband is an attorney. He does personal injury. If you have a car wreck, you can call him <laughs> from anywhere in the United States, and he can take care of that. Um, but he does have a full time job, and so I read the letters and kind of make the notes. We share the word, we share interviews, uh, we share music on the podcast. I like to introduce them to new artists and to music they didn't know existed that is Christian. You know, hip hop, um, rap music. In fact, Ada's here. Ada is a rap artist. She's Dominican. And um, and every time she goes off into the Spanish, they go crazy. Yeah. Like, uh, they're, like I tell them, That's but I don't know. They, it's like they can't grasp it until she starts rapping in Spanish. And it is so good and so fast because Puerto Rican Dominicans speak so fast in Spanish. Yeah. Um, anyway, and I think you're going to get to hear her, but she'll probably sing a song today. And she's good at, good at that as well. But you can look her up. Ada Betsabe over there on YouTube, and you can find her, her videos there. They're really good. But um, anyway, so that's what we do, and we got on the lives to talk to the families and to the guys and the gals that are getting out all over the nation. We get inbox letters every day on Messenger saying, hey, I just got out 24 hours ago. I just got out yesterday, or I got out this week, and um, you helped me through my time, or I gave my life back to the Lord. Um, I dropped out of the gang. I stopped using drugs. Um, You know, I found music that I didn't know existed, and you you helped me. And so we thought, let's let's get together and talk to them and the inside at the same time and let them do shout-outs. And so I hope you're waiting on your shout-outs for them. You can only talk to us right now. Yeah, they're going to be in pretty good. Telford Unit. Wait wait on Telford Unit, Uh, Vanessa. uh, In a little uh, bit, you'll be able to do that. What's he saying? Shout out to Miss Casey for the super thanks and all those that are giving stars. Oh, and all of you that are giving stars, thank thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much. And apparently you can give stars. And I don't know how all that works, but, um, (laughs) you know, Chris I want to give stars. And so, um, yes, you guys, thank you so much. Um, You know, something that Carl, you know, he can't share all of it today or whatever, but he, his sermon, it's so down to earth. We had a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old in service today, and they were only there for a little bit. And I don't know if, if Brett told you, but he said on the way out, his 15-year-old said to him, I listened more in this few minutes I was here for service than I did or ever have probably. Right. Wow. Um, yeah, because well, it was wow. so relatable. And, and that's what we got to do. The Bible talks about Solomon, the wisest man in all of the world and earth forever. And so 
But he didn't get up and speak in these big words right. and things that people couldn't understand. He broke it down to their level. It said he did so in an interesting way. Come on. Right. And that's why they could grasp and they wanted to listen and they wanted to hear what he said. And you had give, you gave an example today that I will use forever, yes. I promise you, um, yeah. about a puppy. Because, you know, yeah. people don't think that, like... You know, if we, we are a dog lover, your wife is a dog lover. She <laughs> just, her true. kids, now the kids you guys got are are allergic right. to dogs. And so she Breaks can no longer heart. have them. But at one point, Andy had five dogs. And a cat. In the and house. When I met and her. then went yeah. and watched dogs for a job. Yes. Also. Yes. 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 She loves dogs. She and so test. you were given the example that if you are a dog lover and you see a hungry puppy, go, go ahead and talk about that a minute. But yeah, if, you, if you're a dog lover and you see a hungry, cold, starving puppy, puppy yeah. on the side of the road, uh, I mean, you don't, you don't go and try to find the puppy's background and Ooh, investigate right. like does he is, yeah is he, <laughs> is he deserving of yeah, food right. is deserving um what has he done you, you know does he deserve help? Yeah. Yeah. yeah should i feed him should i not no you just you just you feed, feed the him. puppy and you wow. help him out you know and, that, and that's what god is looking for you know god's god's people god loves people Amen. And God needs his people to be fed. Amen. God needs his people to be clothed. And God needs his people to be reached and get, be touched. You know, and, and that's what, you know, it's all about. You know, and, and it's it's about helping, you know, others out. You know, and I, I, get, I gave the example, right, like when I first started my job uh, eight years ago in the car business, we, you know, we just got married. Uh, we had a baby on the way. I don't have no education. I've been hustling all my life. I didn't know how to work a real job. I had no skills. I can't carpenter. And I was like, man, let me go to this car lot. Let me give it a shot. Come and on. I walked in and the dude was like, he was like this old, this big jumping around <laughs> guy. And he was like, you know, fast talker. And I seen him, I was like, hey man, um, y'all hiring? He's like, sure. <laughs> and I was like, okay. He's, he, he's like, I was like, when I start? He said, how about tomorrow? I was like, okay. I was like, what do I wear? And he was, he was like, okay, well, that looks good. I said, okay. He said, be here tomorrow. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know? And, you, you know, that's that's the kind of the season we're in, right? Yeah, that, with God. That, yeah, yeah, with God. You know, that, that God is, you know, he, he's, he's not you. doing a, bu a bunch of investigation about your right. background yeah. and where you've been and what you've done. That he's saying, hey, I'm hiring. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Amen. You, you want to do yeah. this? Come on. Come on. Yeah. And so we could do that. We could say in both ways, right? Yeah. That, that when you come to God and you want to work for him, he's not investigating, okay, well, how many sins have you committed and right. which ones and who you're hanging with and where you've been. And he's not doing that. He's like, if you want to work for me, I'll take you up on that. I'll pay yes. you a denarius. Come on. Right. Just like the early morning hour people got. You're right. going to get the same yeah. anointing. Right. You're going to get the same revelation. I'm going to use you. Yes. I'm going to fill you. I'm going to. My power is going to just right. consume you. And you're mm -hmm. going to pray for those that are sick. And they're going to be healed. And yes. you're going to speak the word. And they're going to come off those drugs. I yeah. mean, he. That's that's what God is doing. He's yes. he's looking for. Okay. Now on the on the other hand, I want this to be clear. That you don't have to do any time. That's your right. identity does not lie in the fact that you were a drug addict, right. or your right. identity don't lie right. in the fact that that you did twenty years in prison. Right. Your identity is in Christ. Right. Right. Jesus Amen. didn't do any time. Right. He was yeah. never locked up. <laughs> so if that's the requirement right. that he be locked up, Jesus, he out. Right. 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 He, he don't get to minister. <laughs> yeah. So so God, he isn't requiring anything. Right. He's saying, just be filled up with my spirit, with my love, with my power. If you'll seek me, you'll find me. If Come you'll on. knock, the door yeah. will be open. Amen. And then you can go and you can set others free. That's, That's right. what he's saying. All right. Amen. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to have Ada. Can you try to do your song? And we don't know how it's really going to do on audio, but let's. Well, we don't have audio. I'm just going to do acapella. Yeah. Okay. I have cool. your CD. On In my... there? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ready or not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited, y'all, for Easter and just like how we celebrated today. It was so special to be there, set up all the chairs and just say, come in, come as you are. You walking down the street, come in. Like, we have a home for you. We have a place for you. That was awesome. Sam, DJ, DJ Sam. Hey, I do want to say, if you're in the East Texas area, like, I remember when I was young, like, people would drive 30 miles to go buy alcohol, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. All the time because their town was a dry town. Well, if you drove 30 miles to get alcohol, you can for sure drive 30 minutes to get to a church where you're going to be fed right. and accepted right. and loved. So if you're in East Texas, it's easy to get to. It's right off the interstate, really just about two miles 
or so off the interstate. So we want to see you at Carl's Church on 3 o'clock on Sundays. And make some friends and have some fellowship. And Absolutely. You know, people right. to support you and do this life with you. Come on. Amen. Okay, okay let's All go, right. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. It's going to sound really good because we're right next to the speaker. <laughs> oh, okay. When I say real, y'all say vida. Real? Vida. Real? Vida. Real? Vida. Not that fake vida. Real? Vida. Yo, have been feeling like that woman with the issue of blood. Pushing my way through just to get to you and touch you. Tired of this condition I've been in for so long. Longing for that healing that you have for me. Uh, actually, I'm desperate. Gradually accepted it. I'm in need of life. The life you carry. The life you are. And I've seen you from afar. i watched you in your element. And all that you offer is so relevant. Healing for my soul, my body, and emotions. You want to be my king? Well, I second that motion. And I no longer live in the kingdom I was born in. I'll seek you in the night time. I'll seek you in the morning. I I say real, y'all say be that. Hey, real. Vida. I say real, y'all say be that. Real. Vida. Real. Vida. Uh, remember that woman he met at the well? I bet you remember her well. I used to believe I was doing so well and the rest of the world couldn't tell. Because I went to so many places to find the water my soul desired. And never retired the thought that one day I would find me what was mine. Real. You say be that. Real. Vida. Real. Vida. Real. Not that fake be that real. Vida. Look, hay cientos de raperos que llegan a rico y le dan la gloria y la honra al perico. Y el niño adolescente mirando lo bico en el barrio, jangueando, escuchando a ese tipo. Yo, dime tú, eso te edifica si mata o destruye. Al diablo glorifica, no queda área gris. Esto es blanco o negro, pal blanco, pal negro, pal niño, pal suegro. Todo no es de oro, aunque tenga brillo. Si te roba la paz, pues el diablo es un pillo. Y si te mata o destruye, él también es asesino. Está buscando ser de tu mente un inquilino. La única manera de vivir en abundancia es buscar a Jesucristo siempre con constancia. El diablo anda rondando a la gente, un reón rugiente. Así que ponte consciente. So when I say real, y'all say vida. Real. Vida. Real. Vida. Real. Vida. Ah, not the fake vida. Real. Vida. Real. Vida. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Like comment. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shout out you know, to y'all. You know, I just realized while you were doing that, this is the first time across the entire nation and every jail and every prison they've heard Ada live. Yeah. Wow. And this is their first time yeah. because you know they're just hearing the music and the videos right now for now. Yeah. And um, there's no way we even if we scheduled a prison every single day, it would take I don't know how many years. Right. To yeah. go to all of them. So we ten years. It, so if we went crazy? to one prison a day, there's three thousand five hundred plus prisons. Wait, it would yeah, take a right. ten years that was to just go. On one tablet. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's just on one wow. tablet, not the four. Right. And so wow. it would take literal years. It would like take thirty years or more um, oh to go to every single one. But she just rapped live for all of them, and that's wow. so cool. Yes. Technology is so amazing. so amazing. So we're going to take communion, you guys. So if you didn't stop and run to the kitchen and get a piece of bread or a cracker and a, a drink of water or a drink of juice, um, take your moment to do that because we're going to do that. And my husband is going to explain just a little bit about yeah. what communion means. But you know what? I love communion because to me it's always like this new commitment. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, how people got their 25-year anniversary, sometimes 50-year anniversary. And it's a big number. And so they're like, I want to renew my vows. Yeah. Right? And I, I, they get the dress again and they get all the food and they celebrate it again. Yeah. And to me, that is what it is. It's communion again. Like, I recommit myself to you, Father, in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm letting them know that I am partaking of your body. I am drinking of your blood. And I am accepting you. I am, I want to... I mean, I'm going to be devoted to you. Yes. I'm going to have a clean slate where I've messed up before. I'm going to try not to make those mistakes again. Yes. Like, yeah. it's a it's it's a great, great. I love clean slates. Yes. I love it when somebody messages me an in inbox, which they do very often, and go, I just got out. I'm like, yeah. I always tell them it's a clean slate. Yeah. Let's go. Yes. Right? Yeah. Let's you go. don't have to make the same mistakes. You don't have to live the same way, man. You can love your kids. You can be a different daddy. They, yes. they can go, who is this? One guy right. said he got home. And his wife said, 
my God, I never saw you pray like this before. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy, right? Um, you know, because she had never seen him be such a man. And it was so cool. Like, he's such a father. I love this. You yeah. know, like, there, wow. I think there's nothing more beautiful than to see a father with their newborn baby in their hands. I think that is so beautiful, you know, to see this these loving, strong arms and father with a brand new baby, brand new life. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's what it is right here. Brand new life, you guys. A brand new start. Mm -hmm. I love God. His mercy is new every morning. Yes. Yeah. Every morning. And, and sometimes we don't know it. We don't feel it the way we should because we don't have it. And no one's ever had this for us before, a human being, a new mercy every morning. Like, right. you know, they're like, I'm going to remember that. Yeah. I'll forgive you, but yeah. I won't forget. Yeah. Right. Right? Right. 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 And here is the Lord with this new mercy that we don't get and we don't understand. And to me, this action mm -hmm. is the new mercy yes. that we get to partake of, that we get to acknowledge, that sinks somewhat into our brain. That he loves us. Yes. Even when we messed up 100, 1,000 one million times and that we get to have a new start no yes. matter what anybody else thinks no matter whether they forgive us or not our father forgives us yes. again amen yeah. amen he loved us enough to die for us and so yeah. communion uh, actually comes from a greek word and the greek word is used all throughout the new testament and it, i love it because it means community it means sharing it means joint participation in something it means intimacy and it means fellowship. And I don't know about you guys. Whenever we do these lives, like this is what we wanted to do. We want to create the connection between Come us and you. We want to create the connection Famous. between you and your loved ones. Yeah. We want to create the connection between your loved ones behind bars and you. And we're creating a family in this us joint. And God. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And so uh, to be able to take communion together, uh, which is just a remembrance of the symbol of the body and the blood of Jesus, his death on the cross. It's so beautiful because God is making us one. And so the, really when Jesus took uh, the, the Last Supper, it was the Passover, which was um, a remembrance that all Jews did every year of when God passed over the Jewish homes in Exodus chapter 12. The Egyptians all died. Their firstborn sons all died. But the Jews that had the blood of a lamb spread over the door of their home their families were protected. Their families were saved. And the very next day after that happened, God's people, the Israelites, got set free from 400 years of slavery. And so we know that that's what's happening right now. Uh, many men and women have made the decision to spread the blood of Jesus over the door of their home and say, you know what? I may have done all these things, but for me and my house, from here on forward, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to spread the blood of Jesus over my door. I'm declaring, that's what it is, a declaration yeah. uh, that I'm going to be free uh, by the blood of Christ. And, and you're getting set free from slavery to addiction and from sin and to heartache and trauma and all the things that have plagued and oppressed you for so many years. Uh, so it's a beautiful thing. And, and Jesus in Luke chapter 22 was getting ready to remember this last supper together with his disciples. And I love what it says in verse 14 of chapter 22. It says, when the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. And Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you. And that just really stuck out to me because Jesus knew, he knew what was in all their hearts. He knew Peter was about to deny him three times. He knew they were all going to run away. He knew that Judas was about to betray him. He knew that James and John were fighting and competing to see who could be uh, the most important and get the most power and sit at his right hand. Like he knew that they were a mess, right? But he still eagerly desired to commune and have fellowship with them, knowing all their faults, knowing that they were going to run away. Like he wanted to be with them so bad. And that's really what, what this is all about. I mean, the reason why we closed our church building down in 2016 and committed all of our free time to going into the prisons is because Jesus is eager to eat with you. Yes. He is eager to sit down and have fellowship with you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes. And so I just think it's so beautiful that here, here's these people, and they're a bunch of messes, right? Every single mm -hmm. one of them. But Jesus was eager to eat with them. Yeah. He was eager to have intimacy mm -hmm. and fellowship with them. So I just think that that's so cool. And, you know, communion just means coming together and being one. And like Eve was saying, it's a fresh start. It's a restoration. 
And in, uh, you know, being one is so important to God. Mm-hmm. Like when Jesus, right before he went to the cross, he went and prayed in the garden. All the disciples fell asleep, you know, yet another one of the many failures that they had. And he knew that was going to happen too. He went to pray. And what he prayed about is he said, God, make them one like you and I are one. I want them to have the kind of unity in their body that you and I have with each other. Like that was so important. It's one of the last things that Jesus prayed for was unity. And it's why everywhere we go, we always preach to break down racial lines, break down denominational lines, get rid of gangs, lay the flags down, and like all come together. Be one body of Christ, not us and them, them and me. Right. uh, Like to be one. Uh, because that is God's heart, truly, 100%. Right. It's his heart, and it's his heart for us, too. And so in, in the Last Supper, there was these symbols, right, of the body and the blood. And I was just thinking, you know, he told the disciples before they took uh, communion together, he said, this is my body, um, broken for you, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We can go ahead and pass this around. So what in here we just have, we have a banana chip. We got a cracker. Ooh, we got a graham cracker. Chip. We got a piece of Dorito. Everybody's going to take a piece of something. Um, I want my ramen. To oh. eat. You can have a ramen noodle. They did it with prunes. They did it with tortillas behind bars. Um, whatever you have behind bars that you can take it with, you guys, whatever you have at home, there, has, there doesn't need to be anything special. It's going to stand for the body of Christ. Right. Yeah. Just a symbol. Hey, so what we're going to do, uh, she's passing it over to Chris. Everybody here is going to go down the line. You're gonna, we're going to hold up and, and show what we got. I, got. I got a piece of saltine cracker. I got a sesame stick. I got a Dorito. Banana chip. I got a cheese it I got a Ritz cracker and cranberry juice. Okay. okay. I, 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 I don't know. It's a little piece of something. That's wrong. Right. It's a cracker or something. <laughs> it's a crumb. <laughs> <laughs> I found it under the table. <laughs> Pretzel food. All right. And uh, he said, I've been very eager to eat this with you. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. A and Kool-Aid they got online. That's mm-hmm. cool. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper... It says he took another cup of wine, and he said, this cup is a new covenant. And so everybody, what do you got? I've got some tea, it looks like. (laughs) Who knows? I've got coffee. Water. 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 Cranberry juice. What you got, Chris? Uh, Water. All right. He said, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Amber has a peanut butter cracker. They're online. That's awesome. Hershey's Kisses and water over here, says Kristen. Oh, that's awesome. I've got wine to somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah to yeah. somebody else. <laughs> like, you said, like you said, it's a clean slate. It's a fresh start. Amen. A new commitment, you guys. You know, not only to God, but with our families, with our own walk with God, and saying, you know, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna, I want to be a better wife. I want to yes. be a better mama. I want to be yeah. a better friend. I want to be a better daughter. I, I want to connect with my family. I want to connect with God um, like never before, deeper. You know, deep calling out into deep. Somebody says I have a Reese's and some water. Crystal Blue Torres, and water. hey Here man, that's that. so cool. So um, we're gonna sing a song. At, we, again, we don't know how the audio is gonna be risk because you're, you're playing guitar and we're going to sing a song with everybody so behind bars you guys my seggers and g5s and fours and general population and pcs and cmers and all of you guys on the outside be the nation wherever you are just sing with us i know it's not going to be perfect audio because of the way it is on facebook live and youtube live but we're going to worship god will you go get that yeah. Are you going to go ahead and open up the comments now? And then you'll have it in light over there. Open up the comments. Yeah. Yeah, you can open okay. open up the comments. Ada's over there. Maybe she can do that. So we're going to open up the comments now. So while we're singing, you can sing with us, but you can also type um, hello to your loved one. I saw that cracker and coffee. Somebody taking, there you go, Richard, um, taking communion with us. That's so great, you guys. Yes. Exciting. So we're going to open up the comments. 
when you see the comments roll there you go the comments are rolling you can say hello to your loved one and they will see it say happy easter tell them you love them um they're going to be rolling quick so you can't put yeah. too much and be look be looking if you don't see it pop up after you've typed it it's probably because there's too many people typing at the same time so you might have to type it again they're typing and they're rolling <laughs> if you don't see it pop up after you type you might have to do it again because there'll be so many going on is that the song Sam, come over here so you can get nearer to a mic, or they can roll that one on you. Probably needs
So we got about 10 more minutes that you guys can say I love you or happy resurrection day. Um, don't forget it's our, our anniversary, um, everybody. So I wish we could have done more stuff. I said I wanted to go and do fireworks. Uh, but we didn't get to because we had so many. I'm more excited about doing fireworks for our our anniversary here than oh, I am yeah. on Fourth of July. Yeah. But we made it. You know, it wasn't it wasn't all easy. It wasn't. Um, you know, we were tired. We worked hard. We made mistakes. We whatever. But we made it, and we are one year old now for our podcast anniversary. So it's can, I don't know. You no, almost scary. lost it. I know. I okay, but you put it closer where the camera can see it. It says Vida Nation, happy birthday, Vida Nation, one year. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and so we're so that's why you see the balloons back here, and we've got our child bracelets on and stuff. Um, they glow in the dark and everything. We're really excited. We even bought a little. You can buy little helium balloons. Yes. I didn't know that. So you can buy a little machine that's got the helium in it. So Ada was playing and um, making her, she made her voice go crazy and uh, was talking <laughs> before we started. <laughs> and at first I thought, what is that? You know, I thought she did it on purpose and it was the helium in her mouth. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're having a good day. I'm really excited to have one year in God um, on the podcast, you know, teaching and being with the whole nation. Yeah. Because we were already in Texas in some units. And then on the radio in a lot of units in Texas. But now we're with the whole nation for one entire year. And so Mama Vida is one year older. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Does and, Mama uh, Vida want a piece of cake? Um, I don't know. We could try it or... I shouldn't be eating all this. Maybe maybe I'll have some later. Does anybody want a piece of cake? Of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It calls first church day also, so, you know. Sam, I think you should sing another song since we're still here. Uh, okay. Uh, I need that speaker back. Oh, yeah. oh, we were done. Okay. Gonna be oh <laughs> honey, no, no, they're not. I just I had a cookie because Carl had cookies at his church service with us, and here. so I already had that. I'll eat it later. No, no, don't okay. give me, don't Thank cut you. me one right now. Give it to Carl. He said he okay. wanted some. Okay. I want uh, you see why I can't lose weight, cake. people? Because my husband's always feeding me cakes and stuff. <laughs> and, and I said, I don't want it, and he still fed me more cake. <laughs> what are you going to sing, Sammy? I mean, I thought I might could do Jesus Take the Wheel. I haven't done that one on live Okay. Yet. Oh, you haven't? Uh -uh. Okay. All right. Let's okay. do Jesus really? Take the Wheel. All righty. All right, we got unos que están hablando en español. She was driving last Friday on her way to Cincinnati on a snow white Christmas Eve. Going home to see her mama and her daddy with the baby in the back seat. Fifty miles to go and she was running low on faith and gasoline. It'd been a long, hard year. She had a lot on her mind and she didn't pay attention. She was going way too fast. And before she knew it, she was spinning on a thin black sheet of glass. She saw both their lives flash before her eyes. She didn't even have time to cry. She was so oh, scared. She threw her hands up in the air. Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hands, cause I can't do this on my own. I'm letting go, so give me one more chance to save me from this road I'm on. Jesus, take the It was still getting colder when she made it to the shoulder and the car came to a stop. And she cried when she saw that baby in the back seat sleeping like a rock. And for the first time in a long time, she bowed her head to pray. She said, I'm sorry for the way I've been living my life. I know I've got to change. So from now on tonight, Jesus, take the wheel, take it from my hands, cause 
Pastor Lonnie, were you on here when I told them it's our anniversary? <laughs> we made it. It's a year. We, it went by fast and in a way, and in a way it went by slow because so yeah. much has happened. And one day is so filled with so many things, just like today. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but wow, a year went by. And I remember when we were scrambling, when we started last year, yeah. And we were scrambling around because we had never done anything on video. We didn't know what we needed or how to do it. And But we were going to do it because yeah. there was death row, G5, G4s, and the Seggers here in Texas. That we That's all we knew. They couldn't get anything but Pando, and Pando was video. Right, right. And so we decided because of that we're going to do it because we don't want to leave no man behind. And Come we love them right. already so yeah. much. And they had already found us on radio, and we were going to drop radio and go to the tablet. And so we went ahead and we did a video, and we didn't know what we were doing. And, and in, a, in a way, it's good yeah, because right. we're so out of the box, you know, where we think of ideas people don't normally do because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and um, we just do what God said do. Amen. I mean, we led worship on the radio. When we were on radio, mm -hmm. me and Sam led worship, and they sang through their halls over there in their cells. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure that's never been done probably before. But, um, you know, I thought, I want to be with my, my people, and I... You know, I want to worship together. Yes. And so, you know, you leaders of worship lead in there while we're singing out here. And you can sing in your cell. You don't have to go to the chapel if you're on lockdown, which they were a whole lot. Because, you know, we went through 2020. Mm -hmm. um, people were locked down and couldn't get to the chapel. And so, I mean, so many things have happened. Yes. Um, we're all on radio and on podcast. And we're just honored to be a part of this yes. movement of what God is doing of the souls that are being saved in such great numbers. It's so great. What else can we sing? I, I have a story I'd like to tell. Okay. Tell okay. the story. Okay. So, you know, cause today was our first church service. So it's brought up a lot of things to me. Like I'm remembering a lot of words have been prophesied over us or a lot of dreams I've Come had or, or a lot yeah. of things. Oh. Yeah. Right. So I was thinking about like six or seven years ago, Eve had told me, God had told me through her, right. As the vessel to, to stick my hands out and drive around town and claim um, this territory. Wow. wow. And like, you know, yeah. sometimes God makes you do crazy things, right? right. Like that sounds crazy. <laughs> but part of it is just the obedience, right? right. Like in the act. Cause like I'm driving down the, <laughs> driving down the road, like, you know, like yes. I'm waving at people cause I got to have my hands up. Cause that's what God said, put your wow. hands up, right? And so I'm just standing yeah. there like this wow. and driving Come through on. and staking my claim in my territory all over Come Tyler. On. And like when we were looking we knew where we wanted to be, like the area of who we're trying to reach and, and yeah. the broken and the, the hurting and the lost and the lonely. And, and we knew what we were after. So we were, we were trying to find a building to rent or we were trying to look at churches, like maybe we could use their space. And then Jeremy was like, well, maybe you could rent out a conference room. And I was like, at the four corners. Like, that's where yeah. I want to be, right? Yeah. Like, wow. And yeah. that was six or seven years ago <laughs> that I was like wow. throwing out these seeds. Because that's what you do. You right. just throw out the seeds. Yeah. And it, it's coming up now, six or seven years later. Right. right. And, you right. know, we're all that seed. Like, right. I'm a plant-obsessed person now because I can't have any dogs, so I have plants, like, everywhere. Like, a million of them. Carl's like, not another one can come in this house. Okay? That's enough now. I just like the dogs. 
So me and the kids are at the garden center and we're all picking out our different every all they all want to they all want a plant and they all want a plant down. <laughs> they all want a little seed or a plant. So we're we're getting these different seeds and on some of them it says these seeds will sprout in seven to ten days. Right. And some of the seeds say this will sprout in one to two years. Right. Yeah. And some of it they come at different germ germinations. Germination. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we're those seeds, right? Like sometimes maybe right. you're feeling like a word was prophesied over me or a word was spoken to me or God gave me a promise or I know I'm called to do this or that, but it hasn't come about yet. It hasn't sprung up, right? It hasn't yeah. become the, the plant or the flower yet, but it's in there and it's come working yeah. and it's being watered and it's taking root yeah. and it's, it's getting all the nutrients it needs from the soil to be ready to come up and to grow. So s some of us are hidden away longer than others. Yeah. You're yeah. not forgotten. It's not, I mean, his his word does not come back void, right? The right. the plan is still there. The purpose is still there. It just might come up at a time you don't expect it. It might be six mm. or seven years later. Right. Just yeah. throw out your seed. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you know, with the way she's talking about that, it, our people, like Andy was one that took a long time yes. germination. Yes. <laughs> like a long time. Yeah. You Ten years, <laughs> planted the seed, and then thought, I don't think this one's going to sprout. Um, <laughs> and, and then 10 years later, boom, boom, she started sprouting, you know, and then became this wonderful <clears throat> plan. And um, Sam was uh, quiet and took a, a little bit on her sprouting as well. Um, but then when she came up, she was solid. And, um, you know, that's how it is. Carl sprouted right away, like right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which it's weird because... <laughs> It, you would think differently because the hard head. Yeah. yeah. But he sprouted so quickly. He was so tired of life. He was so yes. broken. He was so ready for something different. Yeah. And he was not satisfied. And he had to have, he had to have it. And he had to have it now. Like whatever I got to do, I got to do it now. I can't, I can't wait anymore. I'll be dead in a minute, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I, I don't know. It depends on those things. But if you're desperate for God um, and you'll grab a hold of him. And you'll allow the seed to be planted. We did a, a, a podcast earlier today that will probably be released after this one. And that's a little bit about what we talked about, you know, um, being discipled. And um, a lot of people are saying we want to be discipled. We want to learn. We want to grow. Yes. Um, so we're doing, we're going to do that. And if you'll apply to your life what we teach you, you'll eat it. You'll water it. You'll let yeah. the seed. You're going to grow. You're going to grow. Um, you've got to be committed. And, you know, you're going to run into some rough spots where, you know, the muscles you never exercise. Right. There's some you're used to exercising. Guys got big arms all day. Yes. But what about the Mavs? Chicken legs. What about yeah. the Mavs? What about them legs, right? <laughs> they got chicken legs and a big old top body because it's easier for them yeah. to. But what about those areas you don't exercise? And so if you want to be a well-rounded mm -hmm. and you want to be, you know, muscly all over and not just in your biceps, then it's going to take some discipling and you're right. going to have to apply it to your life. And Come so on. I hope those out here will also get a hunger, you know, not just the families behind bars, but those of you family out here will get a hunger to be discipled. Those of you that just got out, that if you'll apply, apply to your life, um, what is taught and what you see in the word and maybe you, the church that you go to and you'll apply it to your life, you're going to grow. You're absolutely going to grow. Yeah. So we're going to be closing down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys, I hope you got your shout-outs in so they can see them. I can't see on here, like, how many kind of or anything. Bit, so they've so slowed yeah. down some. Okay, yeah. so I hope that you all got them out and that you had a good resurrection day. It's time to rejoice. I, I've been to places where that where they've had, a, like, a life-size Jesus in a glass coffin. And he's got blood pouring down still, and they're crying. But he's not dead anymore. Right. 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 <laughs> I got good news for you. He ain't yes. in that grave. Come on. He rose from yeah. that grave. He came running out. And now yeah. we can too, you yeah. know. Amen. So if if you're a person, listen, I'm telling you, if you believe in Jesus, there's no more, no more crying, no right. more sorrow. Yeah. He's victorious. He has come out, and he lives so that we can live too. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. So I guess we're going to close down, you guys. We love you we love all. You. love you. I hope that you enjoyed the podcast and something someone said um, got your heart and got you thinking and got you more committed. You've got this clean slate and you've taken your um, communion with us. If you, if you didn't, you can go back to that part. Yeah. And you can take it with us. Get you a piece of bread. Get you some water.
Come or on. something, some Gatorade, even a soda, mm -hmm. and take a sip. And we're going to go eat Vida Nation cake because it's our anniversary. <laughs> if I didn't tell you yet, it's our anniversary. And we are one year old in the Lord um, as Amen. far as this podcast goes. And we're so excited about it, you guys. We love you so much. And we will see you on another live, I promise. Tell your loved ones that we love them with all of our hearts, every single one of us. So we'll see you later. God bless Bye. you guys. Bye.